Welcome to another episode of the Investing with IBD podcast. It's Justin Nielsen, your host, and it is Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. And joining me, as he always does, is Arusha Paris. He's a portfolio manager over at O'Neill Global Advisors. How are you doing, Arusha? I'm doing well, Justin. This market keeps uh, hanging in there, it keeps, <laughs> it keeps crawling up. So, so I'm always good when that happens. You know, I kind of likened it to our news editor, Ed, who, uh, you know, he he's known for just not sleeping. He's just working yes. constantly. And and I feel like this is kind of like Ed. It, it it takes a little power nap and then it just comes right back and it's it's, it's raring to go. Um, so yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about that. We're also going to get into how you use relative strength and AI uh, in your trading, kind of make things a little bit automated. And of course, to help us with that, we're welcoming back a chart legend, Tom Dorsey. Uh, he is the author of Point and Figure Charting. Really, I mean, he's the one that really kind of popular, popularized uh, the, the chart point and figure charting. Uh, not something that was very well known. Um, he was the founder, co-founder of Dorsey Wright and Associates. Of course, that got sold to NASDAQ. Uh, so now he's one of the hardest uh, working retired per persons out there, right? You know, just uh, do, do, doing your stuff every day, trading every day, but just uh, for fun and just for yourself, right? How you Actually, doing, Tom? Exactly right. You know, after 50 years in this business, you can't get away from it. Yep. <laughs> what, what would yeah. I do? You know, retiring and sit on the back deck and yeah. watch the birds? I mean, that, that's surely the end. I mean, now this I'm addicted to the markets, you know, so I have to be here. Yeah. And, and well, you, know, you don't build a great company like that if you're not into it and addicted and can't stop thinking about it that's day, right, right Tom? Mm -hmm. and what makes it fun remember remember when we did the uh, podcast with tommy walker yeah sure yeah from the state penitentiary he's yep. here every day yeah mm -hmm. and, and and he's the one who does the the hard work <laughs> you, you've earned the right not to do uh the grunt work anymore right yeah right exactly <laughs> uh well and uh, I, certainly there's a lot to talk about because i also you know, for those of you that haven't seen Tom before, you know, we've had a few episodes with him because he's just, again, one of those legends that you really want to kind of make sure you get as much um, knowledge from because, I mean, gosh, when when did you start, Tom? Was it in the in the 70s? Yeah, in the 73, 74 with Merrill Lynch. OK, yeah. And I mean, so you've you've seen quite a bit. Um, we were talking a little bit before the show started how, you know, things have changed uh, in term, especially in terms of technology. And uh, you've got a lot of AI stories. But, you know, maybe again, just to kind of give folks a little bit of a, uh, a reminder, you know, why point and figure charts? What was it that spoke to you so much about point and figure charts? Just to remind our audience. Well, that's that's a great question. I had no idea what it was, and and I was uh, I, I took a job running the option strategy department at Week for Securities. I developed that first department they had, and I need to hire someone. So I hired a fellow named Steve Kane, who calls in and trades with us every day now, and he brought this little red and white book in. He said, "Tom," he said, "since I'm going to be your analyst here, um, I'd like you to read this book so you will understand the operating system in my mind." And I said, okay, I'll be happy to do it. Now, mind you, I said, okay, I'll be happy to read it. I'm dyslexic. I wrote my first book before I read my first book. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm serious. If writing it was easier. <laughs> <laughs> writing was much easier. Amazing. But I took this book down to Virginia Beach with me and my wife, and I, I opened the book, and I went to the third paragraph of the introduction because that was a big paragraph. I said, okay, I'm not going to waste my time trying to read stuff in the little, little paragraphs. And I read this third paragraph and I thought, oh, my God, that's it right there. Right there. I, I, I found it. I, I, it took me a long time to find a copy of this, Tom. But when and that's probably two dollars and 50 cents or something. Yeah. yeah. Now they're, they're they're a little bit more expensive because they're so rare. To get yeah, they're so rare. Right. Yeah. Copy. Well, uh, yeah. I, I read if you go to the introduction, you read the big pat, the big, the big article on the first page. My life profoundly changed. I looked across and I saw this point and figure chart and there was no writing on it. And being dyslexic, I understand by seeing patterns and things like that. All of a sudden, it hit me that this is why God put me here on earth, mm -hmm. was to teach this to my brothers and sisters the rest of my life. And I hadn't even learned it yet. Yeah. But I knew it in the introduction. I It, it just hit me that this is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't go back to Wheat and say, okay, I'm, I'm leaving. You know, I'm just starting a department. I stayed for nine years. And... It's kind of like anyone who's thinking about doing something in the future. You look at a megaphone, turn it upside down. So the big part is in your in, in your face. 
So you, you can move as you make mistakes along the way, but you're going down to that point where you finally have to make the decision. That's what happened with me in 1987. I had to make a move. So the, my, my the fellow that worked for me, Watson Wright, I said, you want to come down the street with me? I'm starting Dorsey Wright. And we did. And we had no money. We borrowed 90000 from Dominic and Dominic in New York City, old line firm, great people. And we started that way. And, and my expectation was that we'll be able to help a little old lady who lives out in the country have a better life because she dealt with someone who was trained and supported by us. Mm-hmm. So we started in 1987. Ten months later, the market <laughs> crashes. Yeah. Thank God for the bullish percent index. That has been my lifeline all these years. And that's created by Chartcraft uh, way back when. In, and so we're, we're showing right now, Tom, we just put up on the screen here, uh, the bullish percent yes. from 1974 to 1993. And this was a, a hand done by hand too, right? Which you, yes. you would do that in your office. You know. We updated 2,500 stocks by hand every day. And Tammy, who was, came with me when she was 16 years old, and I knew she would be the heir apparent, and she was. She used to do 200 relative strength charts a week by hand. That's all we could do because we didn't have any computers back then. Everything was done by hand. Mm-hmm. Now, now NASDAQ Dorsey Wright does 20 million relative strength charts a night. Mm-hmm. And that's amazing. We can do this on, on anything that you want to do it on. So it gives us a special perspective. So what happened is bullish percent back in 1987 had reversed over and was on defense from a very high level. The only thing that we knew to do to to help all five of our customers is <laughs> to, to to get them on the sidelines, that there's, that there's trouble coming. We had no idea why, what, where, or anything, but it was in a column of O's at a high level, so you have to be defensive. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, look what we found. October 1987, the market collapses. We had done the right thing. It was the first time we ever used marketing and sales, and it saved the company mm-hmm. because we were able to say, here's what we said before the crash. Right. Now, and, now Tom, j- just real quick, c- could you just explain a little bit? Because, uh, again, for people that aren't familiar with point and figure, you know, it, it almost looks like Madden came out and was uh, doing a football <laughs> play. You've got X's yeah. and O's everywhere. And um, but but there, there, there's a method to the madness. Right. As you said, yes. the O's are, you know, defensive. And so, so, so what how, well, how do you do the, this? The beauty about the point and figure chart is it's just X's and O's. Mm-hmm. And I knew that way back when, when, when I first saw the chart, I'm thinking X's and O's, computers will know ones and zeros. I mean, I, yep. I, I did cards, you know, in college where you, you had to type cards up. The punch cards, right? Punch cards, yeah. yeah. I said, okay, this, it's ones and O's and, and these are X's and O's. Mm-hmm. Then this, this is a technological type of thing, but we didn't know how to go about getting there. Mm-hmm. So we would update this by hand. And it's simply a compilation of the percentage of stocks on the New York Stock Exchange and and numerous other ones we do from Indonesia to everywhere you can think of um, that are on point and figure buy signals. So what's a point and figure buy signal? If I took a fourth grade kid and I said, I want you to to take all the stocks of the New York Stock Exchange. And if the last thing you see on the chart is a column of X's that exceeds the previous column of X's, stack it up over here. When mm-hmm. you stack all those up, we'll divide by the total, and we have a percent. Mm-hmm. That's it. This is fourth grade arithmetic. Mm-hmm. As long as you understand that horizontal line with a dot on top and a dot on the bottom, you're home free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and one thing about also, I think, to give people appreciation about doing things by hand, because I had to learn how to do this by hand when I'm studying for the CMT, the point and figure, which is, it gives you a feel for these stocks, oh. right? Every day, if you're kind of doing it, and it's not, you're not going to put an XRO every day, but no, it's every not. day, you, when, when, especially when you see a change, you're putting the three X's and, and it's taking out, right? It's, you're really starting to learn the character and how a stock behaves. Irusha, you're dead right. That's exactly mm-hmm. right. Cause we did 2,500 by hand every day. Well, I had five analysts that would do 500 stocks and then each one would pass the book to the next analyst. So by the end of the week, everyone had seen all 2,500 stocks and updated them. Yeah. And when we finally went online in 1994, we went on. We were technology then. <laughs> I could I couldn't pry those those charts away from them. Yeah. 
I they, they, they just wanted to keep doing you, you it. You had a routine, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. had a routine, exactly. But, uh-huh. but, man, as technology came along and was able to take those X's and O's and just do magnificent things with them, um, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And the relative strength that we do is was created by Charcraft many, many, many years ago, probably in the 40s, possibly. And and that's the backbone of what we did at Dorsey Wright and Associates was relative strength. Mm-hmm. And like I said, we did 200 a week back then. They do 20 million a night now. Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. everything has that. And, when, and that's a comparison and contrast. Let's say. Let's say I, I said, uh, Irusha, you can buy Coca-Cola or Pepsi. That's it. Nothing else. So mm-hmm. you go to Goldman Sachs and you get a good thick report on, on Coca-Cola, greatest company since sliced bread, wonderful company. You go to go to Goldman Sachs and get a report on, on Pepsi-Cola, nice thick report, great company. Now what do I do? Both of them are fundamentally sound, yep. but I can only buy one. Mm-hmm. So when we divide one thing by another, here's your basic fourth grade arithmetic again. If I take, let's just pull a number out of the air and say Coca-Cola is 100 and let's say Pepsi is 50. Those aren't the prices, but right. I, divide, I divide Pepsi into Coke or I could divide Coke into Pepsi, doesn't matter, and I get two. I'll add a zero to that to make it easier to chart and I chart it on a point and figure chart. Mm-hmm. Now, the chart looks just like a trend chart, mm-hmm. but it's not. It's the relative movement between the two. So when, be, and these are long-term, they can last two to two and a half years. When it's in a column of X's and rising, you should own the numerator. When it's in a column of O's and declining, you should own the denominator. Mm-hmm. So if you said, okay, I'm, 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 I, let's say Coke is, is, is the one, Coke is it. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, you say, what if I, I want to do the whole beverage sector? I, I'm interested in beverage. Well, there are 40 stocks in the beverage sector. Four times four is 16. That's 1,600 stocks. You have to do a relative strength chart on 1,600 stocks to find out which ones are the best, which ones are the strongest. Mm -hmm. And you want to buy the top stocks there. Mm -hmm. So we we do something a little bit different now, too. We'll take, let's say, for instance, the PDP is the first... um, um, ETF that we came out with a DWA, that's a hundred stocks in it. So that's a hundred stocks. That that's it's kind of lumbers around. But I want to find the best stocks in it. So mm-hmm. we'll do a relative strength chart on the whole PDP, a hundred times a hundred, massive amount of calculations done like that. Yep. And here it is, the the five best. Stop. And, and so, Tom, we'll, we'll get into that more in the third yeah, second. Yeah, definitely. So okay. let's get, let's get I, I think we should go back more towards this, uh, the nice bullish percent, because you're seeing some stuff in today's market, right? Yeah. Where, mm-hmm. where so so maybe talk a little bit about what you're seeing in today's market. What What is the bullish percentage telling us about today's market right now? Interesting. Very interesting. What the bullish percent is telling us, if it, if it could speak, it's saying, you know, we got that... Uh, the nifty nine or whatever they call them. These Magnificent are, seven, Magnificent right? Seven. Magnificent seven. Um, I'm, you know, the old nifty 50. Um, <laughs> and, and boy, what I could do something with that nifty 50 now. Oh, my Lord, I could create a <laughs> model for you like you wouldn't believe. But we'll take that. And well, we're going to get into that in the third section. What What's happening here? You had a bullish percent index that broke out the last time we were we, we talked. And I said, I think we're in a 20 year bull market. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not sure I could have written down everything to tell you exactly why, but I saw that pattern. It reminded me in 1982. Mm-hmm. And in 1982 was a point we just got went, went through 78, which was all gold. The, the Hunt brothers were cornering silver. Interest rates were through the roof. And Volcker came in and started lowering rates. We have a situation now. We have a, an election year. Very mm-hmm. possible that the Fed will come in and start lowering rates again. Mm-hmm. And, and you'll find the, the market will get a lift from that. But that bullish percent index is telling us two things here. Number one, it's not the New York Stock Exchange stocks that are making this happen. Yeah. It's those smaller type technology stocks that we saw back in, ni- in the 1990s. You know, party like it's 1999. <laughs> and and that, was about the, that was about the end of it. We have the same kind of situation now. The bullish percent is in a column of X's. 
no, excuse me, it's in a column of O's. So it's saying defensive team is on the field as far as the New York Stock Exchange. Yep. But when you look at the over-the-counter stocks, the OTC, small stuff, <coughs> bull confirmed. So, mm -hmm. so let's let's looking at this chart here. So on the left hand side is the the New York Stock Exchange stocks, right? And and actually, maybe go to the next slide, Mike, because um, I think the that break that broke it apart, right? Where it showed uh, the yeah, this is the bullish percent for the New York Stock. Exchange. So, so yeah. So the first one yeah. on the left hand side was the bullish percent of New York stocks. So maybe uh, Mike, if you can uh, put up the other one, I think we broke it. Did we break it? Into no, no, no. I, I, oh, I only know, had oh, the. Oh, it went yeah. into the PowerPoint. Okay, so on the left hand side of this chart right here, this is the the NICE. So walk us through that. What we're looking at there. And this and, and this goes right back to Nasdaq. This goes back to what all the way back to two thousand uh, and seven. It looks like on the left hand side. Ninety seven. Ninety seven. Is that 97? Okay. 97. Yeah, your eyes are better than mine. <laughs> okay. 1997, we were just about to come to the uh, uh, party like it's 1999 and it was over. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it looks like you kind of crossed this uh, area in 2003, 2004. Yes. You um, had a nice uh, cross here in 2009 uh, as we yep. came out of that bull market, uh, yep. 2010, 2011 as well. And, and the thing about this, you see the top line there. The, that top line should be should be uh, an orange or red line because that's danger. The green mm -hmm. line on the bottom. So once you get up to seventy percent, you mm. are in the okay. the rafters. Okay. You're up okay. in the rafters, and things bad things happen then. And here's mm -hmm. <clears throat> here's the reason why. It's this simple. Let's say an advisor calls a customer and said, "Hey, I got this great stock. I I want you to buy, etc." And he says, "Great, I, I'd like to buy it, but I'm fully invested." Up at this level, they're all in. And all it takes is a little bit of bad news for selling pressure to start coming in and force it down. So when you're at this top level, the bullish percent, everything is bullish. It's been all virtually all the stocks <clears throat> up at 70 percent have been visited by buyers. Mm -hmm. That's when the trouble starts. So in our case right now, it's in a column of O's, which is saying if you're playing a football game, the defensive team is on the field. OK, mm -hmm. this rally hauling the New York or hauling the standard and pours up to new highs. I mean, it's been wonderful, but it's been the OTC tech type stocks. It's, it's the it's the mid mid cap stocks that have really done the best. Mm -hmm. That's and like it looks like this column was immediately preceded by a whole column of X's no, it's really to strong. kind of end 2023. Right. Mm hmm. So, uh, yeah, so v very interesting that the, you know, how the rally started a little bit yep. defensive now, but uh, we, we did get kind of that offensive signal as well. And when we come back, we're going to get a little bit more into this so we can really kind of uh, nail this down. And also, I want to revisit some of your relative strength points uh, because we didn't talk oh, about yeah. comparing it to cash. So we'll get into that after the break. Welcome back to the Investing with IBD podcast. It's Justin Nielsen here, your host, along with Arusha Paris, who joins me every week. He, of course, is a portfolio manager and analyst over at O'Neill Global Advisors. And our special guest this week is none other than Tom Dorsey himself, the uh, the godfather of point and figure charts, uh, one of the charting legends, uh, of course, you know, with a lot of experience starting in the 70s uh, and eventually selling his uh, Dorsey Wright and Associates to NASDAQ and now He's just doing this for the, the for the good times, right, uh, Tom? <laughs> uh, so we, we, when we when we left off, we were kind of talking about where we're at, and maybe it maybe it makes some sense to go back a little bit because um, you know I, I'm looking at a few of these places where we we got below that lower band, and you know certainly 2018, you know, was something that kind of sticks out. Of course, this is when Powell. Uh, was initially saying, okay, it's time for us to, you know, raise rates, this lower rates thing, it's gone on long enough. And uh, the market rebelled in 2018. And then 2019 was starting to look pretty good. And that's when you were kind of like, hey, this is, this looks familiar, right? I've, I've, I've been here before. It looked familiar. I've been here before. And that's when I said, I think we're starting off into a 20 year bull market. Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> because the next year, notice the column of O's that are going down there. Yeah. The next year, we we caught COVID. Yeah. And that market collapsed to the point where it was like six percent. Well, and, and then was, let then, me talk to there very quickly, Tom. Because okay, you you were bullish when you came on the yep. the, the first time, and and you're thinking that we're going into another Super Bowl market here. When you started seeing those columns of O's, 
starring the Phil, did you let your opinion overrule what the market was actually saying at that time? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly as it is. <clears throat> I was laying in a hospital bed. Oh, wow. And all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. This is when the Dow Jones was going down 3,000 points in a day in 2000. Mm -hmm. I'm watching. I got a TV set in my, in my room. I got no computers. I'm watching my portfolio go up in smoke. And, <laughs> and it was like, oh, my Lord, I can't think of a worse time since I've been in this business. And it's taken me a long time to make all that money back, but I did. And mm -hmm. but these things happen, they happen fast. And you get down to that point and we started moving right back up. The point yeah. now is I see the same kind of thing on the bullish percent chart. We're going to go into a column of X's. But this more important to me is it's like the dot com days. Uh -huh. the dot, now we have A.I. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you what, A.I. is unbelievable. If I still had Dorsey Wright and Associates, I would have every person in the firm do once a week, ask AI a question on the business, on our business. And then we'll have uh, pizza and, and, and beer on Friday afternoon at three o'clock and everyone talk about what they ask chat GPT. The more I ask chat GPT or Bing, sometimes I prefer Bing, the deeper the answers I get. Like I told you the other day, I was flabbergasted at what came up when I asked it. So, People, advisors are going to have to learn to use this AI along with what they do. Customers are, are, are going to want a good, solid, high principle, high integrity advisor who knows what he's doing, but he's got to be utilizing the technology along with this. Technology, if, if a person just wanted ideas and whatnot, AI could do this for you. Mm -hmm. but, you need, but you need an advisor. You need an advisor who knows what to do with the portfolio and and where you are risk wise and all those kinds of things. Well, but and to AI, a degree, you have to know how to prompt AI. You know, yes. if you ask it the wrong way, it's going to give you trash. Justin, you're dead right. Justin, you are dead right. That's why you got to ask it every day, something, and you and you and you and you get better at it. Right. So, meeting uh, my friend yesterday. Um, Kim Mahan from uh, Max Potential. They teach they teach technology to young to to intern type people and then place them into firms, technology firms. And the firms buy them up. I mean, it's it's unbelievable what's going on. She showed me what they do, and I went from wanting everybody in the office to not wanting anybody. And it's technology, and it's because I all of a sudden she showed me what, what's up. I was flabbergasted. So so just to clarify that a little bit more, so. People, all, everyone's working remotely yes. in, in her firm, right? Versus when you were there w running your company, you'd all <laughs> sit together in, yes. a, in a room. Do this by hand. Everyone. Exactly. Pass the book to your neighbor. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I had 20, like 22 people there. We all sat together in a room, a desk right there. I had a $25 desk. I was right in the middle of, of all of them. I had no office. Mm -hmm. And the conversations that went on were just fantastic. We never, we never had a meeting. We never went to a conference room to have a meeting to decide when the next meeting was. People yeah. would just gather around my desk for five minutes. We'd talk about something, say, okay, rock and roll, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. And it worked beautifully. And every one of them became world class. Mm -hmm. But now times have changed with technology. And I saw that for the first time yesterday, what can happen or how you can um, set your firm up the most beautiful way. What was that? Uh, what was that? Oh, the program was. It, are you talking about the the one? That yeah, it just R? got two. It just had two letters. R O or something. R dot yeah. R O dot A M. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. And it's not it's not A M dot com. It's just R O dot A M. Yeah. And that'll put you into into the system where she is. I was blown away. Mm -hmm. So now I am a proponent of people not working in the office. Save mm -hmm. the rent. Yeah. You know, and yeah. she saved a ton of rent. Overhead. And that's and, probably the, the problem with real estate and, and corporate real estate. <laughs> commercial, too, right. Yeah. You know? So 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 getting back to the the you know, kind of where we are, because I, I, I want to make sure that people kind of understand your historical perspective. So, you know, we, we, we had COVID, we came we came out of that, mm -hmm. quickly got extended, back above that 70% range. Right. Uh, where where you're saying we were in the rafters. And yep. then of course 2022. 
uh, we're 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 back in the basement again. You know, That's we're right. heading, heading down slowly but surely, heading down. A lot of O's. A lot of defense a lot of on the field. It, see, it comes down, it rallies back up and yep. gives you hope. Yes, mm -hmm. and it gets people in, and then yes. turns into defense again, and it continues to have lower tops and lower bottoms until you finally cross that that green level, that twenty percent level. Now you're in the promised land. Mm -hmm. This is where you can begin getting serious about buying stocks. One more touch in 2023, I should mention. I'm, I'm pointing that yep. out uh, for people that are looking uh, maybe on investors.com slash podcast or at YouTube. Uh, don't forget to like and su subscribe, uh, all of that stuff. But yeah, a final October, you know, 2023, um, you know, that I'm pointing out right there. And then, you know, talk about what happened after that. Yeah, October 2023, you had uh, um, a decline. We came down close to that 20 that that 20 percent level. Um October 20, oh, 20, yeah, here we go, 2023. Um, it crosses that level. It goes yeah. down below that 20% level. Yep. And that was the point. I mean, when it reversed in a column of O's, it's saying, hey, you lost the football. Mm -hmm. If you want to keep running plays, go ahead. But you're, bet, you're better off using the options market to hedge your positions or things like that. Uh, maybe buy high, more high yield type of stocks. But um, that came right down to below 20%. Again, the promised land, and notice the X's. When it reverses back up into X's, it's gone like a striped goose. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And now, so now we're, yeah. the here. We're, we're now very close to reversing back up, but notice where we're going to be, mm -hmm. 60%. That's only 10% be, uh, before you hit the rafters. Mm-hmm. So, so when you wait, when you hit the, when you're in a strong market though, can it hit the rafters a lot? Like when when for other oscillators and things like that, you know, when they get overbought, sometimes they can get they can pin and be overbought, and it's not necessarily a sign of sell at this time. It's a kind of a sign of strength that it, it's 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 able to have the strength to stay up there. No, Irushi, you're dead right. You you are dead right. So this is a big picture type of thing. Mm -hmm. What we do now. We can we we go create models ourselves or go into ETFs and use relative strength to pick out the top five stocks. These are the mm -hmm. ones you want to yep. be in, and and you may not you may not like it, but they're the ones that are going to perform the best. Mm -hmm. Now you you mentioned the relative strength and how you were comparing things versus uh, other yep. things, and and again, as you said, it's you. I know I know you like to keep things simple, Tom. You know mm -hmm. you always say the fourth grade math, and you know you couldn't yeah. get more simple than that. But you also uh, when we were kind of chatting beforehand, you said sometimes you're not comparing a stock versus another stock. Sometimes you're comparing it versus cash. So why do, why do you do that? Well, I'll tell you what. 2008 was a wonderful year for Dorsey Wright and Associates. Mm -hmm. I loved 2008. It was a killer for most people. In fact, if you looked at a normal distribution of years going back to the 20s, mm -hmm. and you said, okay, what, what's here? on the, What's three standard deviations below trend? What's three standard deviations above trend? 2008 fell right next to 1937. It wow. was that bad. It was that bad. Mm -hmm. But at Dorsey Wright, it wasn't because Dorsey Wright has what's called the dynamic asset level invest investing, Dolly. And what it does is, is, is calculates all these, these, the whole universe of stocks and takes sectors and says, okay, where should you be? Well, in 2008, it would not allow us to own any stocks whatsoever because the top two positions in 2008, whatever was in the top two positions, the strongest relative to the rest of them, that was your portfolio, those two. So you couldn't, stocks, U.S. stocks and international stocks were five and six. You couldn't even get down to buy them. Up here was cash. You mm -hmm. had fixed income. You had foreign currencies, that type of thing. So we like to compare and contrast with cash, do a relative strength with uh, with with cash against the stock. And if, if cash wins, you should be in cash with that stock. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe talk a little bit about, I mean, again, a, a lot of this seems simple. You're 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 writing X's and O's. You're you know, you're mm -hmm. just looking at different levels. Uh, do you ever get to a point, though, where, um, you know, maybe li like for me in, in, in 2020, when COVID happened, I got my signal to buy. But man, that was a tough signal to follow. It was like, you know, all this uncertainty and I've got a follow through day in April of 2020. Uncertainty is at the highest. So do you ever do you ever have those moments where, gosh, your signal is saying this, but your your brain is telling you what what are this? This has to be wrong. Well, it tells you that you're going to have a difficult role if you're buying stocks in general. You buy the mm -hmm. S&P in general. 
And I want to talk about that too in the SSO. But yeah, you can have a rough road to go. That's why now what we do is saying, okay, we're in a bad situation. We're in a tough situation. We're going to, we're going to buy stocks. Which ones should we be in? Mm -hmm. And that's where the relative strength calculation comes in to select the top five. It's not unlike a baseball game mm -hmm. where, where the pitcher, you put your best pitcher up there and he's on the mound and he's starting to throw pitches. And next thing you know, he walks four people, three home runs are hit off of him. And, and the coach comes out, goes up, talks. He's a bill. This is not your day. Mm -hmm. Go back in the dugout, bill from the, the bullpen, come on out and replace him. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the way it happens. Yeah. So and you might have a great, you know, a great fundamental story for your stock. You know, a great pitcher, but as you said, it's just not his day. <laughs> it's not his day. Right. And some and some other pitcher, it is his day. Right. But we need to know which ones come out and which ones go in. Mm -hmm. And that's where the relative strength comes in. We, mm -hmm. I, I'm so thrilled at the models that we've created. We're putting them out there. It's Tommy's creating, putting them out there for free to people just wow. to look at them and follow them and that type of thing. Um, I think you might like to charge a little bit of money going forward. But... <laughs> But not much. I mean, it's more, it's more a a, a service. Yeah, and an exercise, kind of a mental exercise. And exactly. I, I'm glad you mentioned that because when we come back in the next segment, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what your models are showing, um, cool. how you do it, and and those top five stocks that you're seeing in different areas. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Investing with IBD podcast. Justin Nielsen here, your host, along with Arusha Paris from O'Neill Global Advisors. And of course, Tom Dorsey, charting legend, point and figure guru, and a general nice guy too. Uh, so uh, so you were talking a little bit about kind of some of the models that you build. Um, and I, I'm just going to kind of show people where where they can find this. It's uh, it's uh, If you go to Bitly, uh, our producer actually kind of created a, a nice little shortened uh, thing here called you know Bitly. So that's bit.ly slash P and F models. That's going to get you to this uh, Patreon site. And, uh, you know, it's going to say, hey, if you want to pay, you know, whatever, uh, you, you can just kind of scroll down. And we're going to just look at this kind of model, uh, these models that you have. So it, this says March 2024 model portfolios, and it looks like you've got eight here. Uh, so uh, talk to us a little bit about these models using relative strength, yep. getting the top five. And how often, I mean, the markets change a lot. How often are you running these? Uh, once a month. They will change at the end of the month. The coach is going to go and he's going to look at who's the best pitchers and, and see what needs to be changed. And we'll get it, we're giving it a month. And if it if it stays in, it stays in. If not, another another one rolls up into it. Mm -hmm. And we've come up with the most interesting stocks. And I and I own all of these models, so it's not we're just not, we're not just doing that. And if you see a thing there that says you can go up to a higher version of this, there is no higher version. So mm -hmm. don't, don't. So it's free. It's free right now. And so, yeah. for instance, like the Nasdaq 100, yep. you're running. You're running relative strength on all the stocks within the Nasdaq 100. That's right. And putting the the top five. These are the these guys. are the ones every month. Yeah. It's like on. it's it's like an arm wrestling contest. I'm gonna take my hundred guys to Las Vegas, but I'm only taking the top five. Mm -hmm. And these are arm wrestling guys, and I make them all arm wrestle each other. Mm -hmm. And the one in the top five who win the most arm wrestling contests are coming with me to Las Vegas. Yeah. I mean, lost wages. But I mean. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so in the NASDAQ 100, as of the end of uh, last month, crowdsource or excuse me, crowd strike holdings, yep. advanced micro AMD, Constellation Energy, Meta Platforms and NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. And that NVIDIA, you know, I know it's come a long way and whatnot, but when it, it it's still one of the best arm wrestlers. Mm -hmm. We'll find out at the end of this month if NVIDIA has stays in there or not. And what Do you remember where it was last, last month? Was it like number two or something? Is it starting to drop or? Yeah, it fell out. Of, it fell okay. out. Yeah. Okay. yeah it okay. fell okay. out of the portfolio. Interesting. A month ago. Okay. And that forced us to take tremendous profits in it. But yeah. it's right back in the next okay. one. Well, that's that's okay. I mean, mm -hmm. it went, it lifted some more weights and came back and and, yeah. won the <laughs> and earned its spot, right? It earned its spot. Yeah, exactly. And uh, well, you, you know, t talk to me a little bit because I mean, again, when you look at the Nasdaq 100 
top five, you wouldn't think Constellation Energy would be, you know, coming up. So let's talk a little bit about CEG, if you don't mind. Um, I, I mean, you, you look at the chart and it looks like a tech company provides power, natural gas, renewable energy and energy management products. That's the description from Market Surge. Um, but yeah, here, here you have, again, a little bit different. You wouldn't expect necessarily with all this AI that Constellation Energy, but I guess well, the AI, you need a lot of energy, you right? Expect, you can expect hey, Rusha, you, you and Justin would be best to answer that question because it's more fundamental. Mm -hmm. And all I know is it's there. Right. Mm -hmm. It's right. in the group and it's done well. It's done extremely well. It may stay in at the end of this month. We don't know. So we got a few more days to go to the end of the month. It'll, it will rebalance everything. And I own all these. So mm -hmm. when a rebalance happens, you know, it's happening with me. And I'll tell you, it's been, it's been really, really good. Yeah, mm -hmm. and from a relative strength perspective here, just even on the, the market surge uh, chart, you can see you know, it's not a necessary surprise that it was going to be close, at least, because that it, it's been outperforming a lot of other stocks uh, over the over the last month. Right. With that big jump. Which, which one are you talking about? Uh, with, Constellation. with Constellation Energy. Constellation Energy. Yeah. Yeah. Outperforming mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of stocks. Mm -hmm. And I don't I can't give you a fundamental reason why. All I know is it shows up and I own it. Mm -hmm. makes sense. You and, and do you find that this keeps you, uh, well, I guess, you know, something that a lot of people have complained about is how, you know, sometimes you get this sector rotation that'll happen and, you know, oh, okay, this is hot right now, but then it, you know, falls off and something else takes its place. And, you know, some people complain, oh, is it, is it too, is it happening too quickly for a monthly rebalance? Have you ever kind of run into that problem that monthly no. is just, no, no, we haven't, mm -hmm. we haven't. Um, when you look at the S and P 500, um, that's an interesting one. The top five, we take all of the ETFs like, like, um, technology, se semiconductors, computers, all the different, uh, ETFs that would underlie the S and P 500. Mm -hmm. Then we put those into the matrix, into the mix. We take out the top five and then we put that into the mix and the top five from there come into it. Mm -hmm. So, with the S and P top stocks and, and, and along with this in there, you have the, the, the performance back test whole thing. Mm -hmm. So you got, um, crowd strike holdings in the S and P 500 Coinbase. Everybody yep. knows Coinbase, yep. man. That's been a great performer for me. Yeah. Uh, Verity holdings, super micro computer. What a horse that is. Yep. And, <laughs> and, and Nvidia shows up in there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And now, again, one of the things that people kind of sometimes uh, struggle with is, OK, the relative strength, you know, th th this was something we always heard all the time. Relative strength is 99. Isn't the move done at that point when it gets so strong? You're the strongest arm wrestler. You know, isn't there just no way to go except for down from there? No, not necessarily. Think about think about NVIDIA when when the stock was back at 100. Mm -hmm. Where are we now? 900. Mm hmm. Stocks that hit 90 almost always go to 100. I would mm -hmm. say stocks that hit nine, 900 probably almost go to 1,000, almost always go to 1,000. Um, this could be one of those that goes to 2,000. You just mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. But this is telling us you need to be there. In a month, if you shouldn't be there, it's going to fall out. It's going to come out. If it's still there, you're going to want to be owning it. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of this is it keeps you abreast of it every single month. You can look at this list and say, okay, Here's the things that I'll make changes with. Here's the things that I'll put in there. Leave it for a month. Mm -hmm. Walk away. And it's and, all and, automatic, no emotions, nothing. It's <laughs> right. a system, right? No so, emotions, yeah. no emotions. Yeah. And and when, we, when we're selecting the, the uh, portfolios to do this with, we want those to be solid portfolios too, like mm -hmm. this magic formula top, uh, top stocks. AI. So, so maybe describe that because I mean that's not going to be necessarily. Uh, no, you know, that's a fundamental self-explanatory. What, what what is your magic formula? That's a book right here, and the little book that beats the market. Okay. And being dyslexic, I've had this for decades, mm -hmm. never read it, but it's now on audio, mm -hmm. so I listened to it, and it came up with this formula, the magic formula that they come up with a fundamental selection for the stocks. 
And Tom, can you show the book again just to, to the camera so, so that everyone can see it? Maybe oh, a little, a little bit, bit higher. higher. Yeah, so the it's the little book go. that still beats the market, and this is by Joel oh, new Greenblatt. Yeah, so this is the new one. But uh, you, so. Yeah, you may have to hold Perfect. years years with these. Yeah. So we'll take we'll take the model. We'll, you can go into the um, um, you can go right into the computer and get the stocks in the model. You have mm -hmm. the fifty million, the four hundred million, and then run your relative strengths on that. And there you have it, magic formula. Stocks, mm -hmm. I don't even. These are all fundamentally sound. If I look at the, the top uh, fifty. Yeah, it's not, it, there, there's some uh, names I don't recognize. Of course, uh, Giga Cloud Technology is one that GCT is one that we've been seeing. But um, and, we, yeah. and we, you guys have been yeah, talking Giga about Cloud. Hockey Live too, right? Yeah, we've been I talking about that one. That top one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah. Like, Ar Arcturus. Uh, yeah, yeah um, I need stronger glasses. I, I, I am familiar with Aarhus, uh, our house. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, I, I always I always pronounce it the Danish way because that's a city in Denmark, right? Well, uh, how do you pronounce <laughs> that? Uh, our well, hosts. Puma uh, our Biotechnology, host. and then Surge Pays is, I think, what Surge Pays is a mobile uh, internet system. And okay. I remember reading stories about how these mobile systems would go through a neighborhood like in Africa. Mm -hmm. And you got to be ready. It's going to be there at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, you're all now on the net. So do all the things you want to do on the net because it's passing through your neighborhood. Wow. 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 And... I don't know too much about it, but Surge Pays is interesting. I can't pronounce the next one. Zyme works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those but, are all. But it's uh, there, and yeah. and it's there. It has to be fundamentally sound first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before it can can go into the model. Mm -hmm. And so what's nice about this is that you can really just pick whatever whatever strategy works for you, right? Exactly. You're more relative strength. You're more fundamental. And then I have done this. Years to it. Arusha, I've done this in Indonesia for 15 years it's incredible. with mm -hmm. Indonesian stocks. I can't even pronounce the names of them. <laughs> and, and, and I taught them how to do it, and they just handled it. I yeah. do crypto. That's where I do my crypto in Indonesia. That's so uh -huh. cool. And that crypto account that I have there, that's up about 100% and doing the same thing, except what we do with the crypto is updated daily. Yeah. That's so why daily. why daily there? Because uh, it was just they, move, so they move so fast. Yeah, okay. they move so fast, and and we have like the fifty top um, um, crypto companies that Indonesian government will let them use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's beautiful. I, I I just get my report every day from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Here's where you stand. And uh, just as a reminder, you know where you can find this, and and more importantly, you said this, Tom. You know that you can kind of scroll down. And you can find, okay, here's, you know, here's what it was last month, you know, and, and there's a little bit of commentary. So that's at bit.ly, uh, that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash P and F models. And uh, that'll get you to that page. You scroll down and you're going to see, again, you know, what the models have been like for the last few months. Um, you can kind of see how that changes, maybe see if any of these, uh, you know, idea generation things work for you. And then be on the lookout uh, March 31st, right? Because that's yeah, when the yeah. next uh, next one will come up. Exactly. So you can say it real time. Let's talk for a second before we end. Let's, I was going to have you uh, share your story because it was such an interesting one about yeah, this is so uh, what you did with ChatGPT or Bing. Yeah, I this say. is why people have to use it and ask the question. Mm -hmm. People ask me a question. I said, did you go to chat yet? <laughs> no. That's great. That's great. <laughs> I saw three lovely young ladies. I'm sitting in the cigar shop, walk by. They came in and I asked them. They were college graduates. And I said, do you guys use ChatGPT? No. They didn't really? know what it was. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I, con I went to chat right there. I said, hold on. Stay right there. I said, write me a poem in Shakespeare style for three beautiful young ladies graduated from college. And within 20 seconds, it was done. And I showed right. them. And it, they will now be using it. <laughs> yeah. So, That's awesome. Well, I've got a daughter in college, and so she knows all about it and all about how be careful when you use it because now the professors have things that will detect chat GPT generated yeah. answers. <laughs> you want to say, okay, I used it as a research tool. Here's here's what, yeah. here's yeah, what I yeah. came up with. But mm -hmm. I asked it. I said the other day, I said, I would like you to create for me a Trojan horse option strategy. Now, that's something I came up with the other day. I just... Because it's something I do every night. I, every night, I uh, the futures are, are trading, futures options are trading. So I'll do I'll put a delta neutral position on in the futures. So no matter which direction it goes, 
my options, whether they're puts or calls, will offset. Right. And I always sell, I don't buy. Will offset it. Mm -hmm. So I told her to do this. And, and here's what here's what the chat came back with. Certainly, let's delve into the realm of options and devise a strategy inspired by the legendary Trojan horse. Just as the Greeks used cunning tactics to infiltrate Troy, we'll craft an option strategy that appears innocuous, but harbors hidden power. Here's our Trojan horse strategy. I'm like falling out of my chair right now. <laughs> I'm falling. Number one, it says. It's got you hooked. I'm about to fall off my chair. <laughs> Number one, it says the bait. That's the covered right. Like a wooden horse left outside Troy's walls, we'll use a covered call as our initial offering. It, in, it involves owning, et cetera, et cetera. Number two, the hidden warriors, long put options. Conceal within the horse will secretly hold long put options. These puts act as our warriors, ready to defend against adverse market movements. If the stock price drops significantly, the long puts kick in, provide downside protection. Now, I didn't say anything about this. Mm -hmm. Number three, the surprise attack, straddle and strangle. When volatility strikes, we unleash our surprise attack. We'll implement either a straddle or a strangle. And I'm like, I'm dying. <laughs> right. I, I just said, do me an option strategy, Trojan horse option strategy. And it came up with this. And with some changes, I don't buy puts or anything like that. But it, it was beautiful how AI came up with that. Yeah. Amazing. And yeah. it's only going to get better too, right? It's, it's only like going to get better. We're in the beginning, man. Hanes underwear yeah. selling. Hanes selling Hanes yeah. on, online, man. Uh -huh. it's so well, and, and again, for those that don't know the story behind that, you know, it's it's that kind of famous uh, in, in the internet craze when Hanes underwear went to online. You know, we're we're in Hanes.com now. I think it was. It just went crazy, right? Yeah, like everything, like Christian.com. I think when mm -hmm. they put a .com after yeah. that, ChristianBooks.com yeah. or something. Anything went, went was .com, yeah. man. It was going straight up like a homesick yeah. angel. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to your point, you kind of think that we're at the beginning of this, you know, era, yeah. like a little bit more like in the 80s, you know, 82, you know, range rather than the 99 range. You you, you don't think we're partying like it's 1999. Yet. No, no, no. We're just beginning. It, yeah. it would be the 82 range somewhere yeah. in that area because this is going to be big. It's going to it's going to be a disruptor, but it's something you have to go with it. It's like advisors. You got to go with it. They can do these types of things. Anyone, no matter what you're doing, you have to use chat. Mm -hmm. I have a next door. I have a next door neighbor that that is. She's a, a science teacher, and she'll be over the house one night. And I said, "What are you teaching tomorrow?" She said, "Well, I'm teaching uh, electricity and magnets." And I said, "Okay, hang on." I asked chat. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher, etc. Uh, tell me how I should teach my my program tomorrow. Give me ten questions I should ask. And within about a minute, here's your here's your whole thing tomorrow. So so it's not just right the there. students that can uh, cheat. The the teachers can cheat with their lessons too. Yeah, <laughs> so I told equal you. opportunity, <laughs> equal opportunity. Uh, it's, I think we also have to put in a little perspective too, because Tom, you have been doing this for a long time, and you yeah. have seen disruptors come over and over again. The, I, you talked about I remember a long time ago about a. Uh, the fax machine, how that changed a lot of things. Oh. And all the internet, right? So you, so for for some of us who maybe seen a few disruptors, to you, you already know, like, hey, this is just the beginning. This is going to change everything. The fax you know, machine was was instrumental to me in 1987 when I started Dorsey Wright and Associates. I, I I would write the report every day and fax it to all five of our customers, mm -hmm. but I, I we couldn't afford a fax. It cost eighteen hundred dollars. For a one paper fax. Yeah, so we yeah. borrowed it from the guys downstairs and I would take the report down and go one paper, one paper, one paper. But that was technology. Yeah. Then all of a sudden somebody and you thought that was great. <laughs> oh, it was great. At 12 o'clock, I was finally faxing out the report. Somebody came to me and said, Tom, I can do this faster for you and cheaper from from England. I'm from I'm in England. I said, OK, tell me how. All of a sudden it's an auto fax that's, that's going on. Now I don't have to pay for the, those those faxes there. And that was like, where do you go from here, man? We have yeah. a fax machine. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I've been through, I've been through, you know, at 76 years old, I've been through pretty much all of it, you know, from, from mimeographs to uh, <laughs> sending out somebody out with a note on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is, yeah. that, is that how you have been put your trades in? Okay. Yeah, that's when, when you got, when Bring you got this to my broker. <laughs> you got my age. I got to give it to a horse and let them take it out. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so well, I've, hey, I've, I've seen it all. Yeah. Tom, it's uh, it's always so great to hear your stories, uh, get your perspective on stuff. And uh, we really appreciate you coming on and again, sharing uh, as much. And again, you know, the, the fact that you kind of have these systems that are objective, uh, that you have simple. Uh, so I highly recommend folks read your book, uh, point and figure charting, kind of just understand it, do it by hand. That's, that's the only way you learn yeah. it really. You can't just look at it and just automatically, you know, get it. You add, have to kind of do it by, by hand. Let me add one more thing. Mm -hmm. It's imperative that if you're an investor, you understand options. Mm -hmm. And for me, back in the 70s, when options just came, debuted, I decided that was going to be my direction. That was that was the one thing nobody was doing in the office. Well, there was no computer. So I had to go home every weekend with a legal pad and a paper and do option strategies. If the stock went here, the option would be here, et cetera. And I did that. And it was ingrained in my mind. So now I see three dimensionally. Yeah. When I talk about these things that the the um, uh, Trojan horse. Yeah. The straddles, just, the strangles, the. Yeah, yeah. It's just a combination of being long or short the uh, futures and then selling enough calls or puts to hedge it to the point where you've blocked it off no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. And then All I you want is time to pass. I Exactly. Mm -hmm. Justin, you hit it on the nose. I want the theta. I, if you're standing on Coney Island in July and you've got an ice cream cone and you stand there till four o'clock, how's it going to look? It's, <laughs> it's the melt that I want. Yeah. I don't need to be John Wayne. Just give me the melt. Yeah. Well, again, great to have you on, Tom. Always a pleasure. Uh, thank, thanks again. Okay. Anytime, guys. Make sure you join us next week because we're going to have another one of our favorites, uh, another CMT, uh, just like Arusha, David Keller is going to be back on the show. Of course, he's the chief market strategist over at stockcharts.com. Great guy. Uh, it'll be great to have him back on the show. So hope you join us for that. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast, whether it's Apple, Spotify, what have you. Uh, that'll help us out a lot. And we hope to see you back next week. Thanks for watching.